Hey, 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 ho. Music sounds weird today, man. You sound weird. Hey, this is Business Pants. Uh, this is the business news. It's told with humor and deep, deep knowledge of uh, the investment sector and ESG news. And a reference. A lot of that. Uh, happy Tuesday, everybody. I am wearing my uh, alma mater's sweatshirt today. McGill, McGill you're the one. It is a snow day here in Portland, Maine. Uh, we are in the middle of a snowstorm. Uh, everyone's home. Yeah, there's a so good I, chance uh, I got I, a BBC moment coming when my two-year-old like runs in the room in the middle of the business news. Oh, well, that's, yeah, put the camera on her. Yeah, we, there's we no need... more business than a two-year-old. That's the real business. So um, I want to tell you that because this is the reason why I'm dressing down today. Because, I, 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 because I've been preparing all morning for this show. I have yet to go out shoveling, so <laughs> I decided to be real. Like, wait, can we can we not pretend that this is like a unique dress down moment for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, even for me, this is this seems a little like early '80s Cosby. <laughs> well, back, back bad reference we now. All, all does the not hold that, yeah. that. Now that's a reference that does not hold up. It doesn't, but I mean, let's be honest. When when we were enjoying early '80s Cosby, who knew? Uh, we didn't know. Let's talk about lighter fare. <laughs> All right. Well, he's in jail, so get over it. I mean, he's that's the good news. They put him away. The bad. All right. Uh, let's go over the agenda. Oh yeah, we have a good uh, good theme today. We're, we're gonna cover the globe today. We're gonna all, all of our stories at least have some has, has at least one foot in non-U.S. soil. So that's good. Uh, we're also going to look a little bit at, uh, more deeply in Jack Dorsey's decision to move to Africa. We have a bunch of fun biz nuggets, including a whole new war, chicken sandwich war. <laughs> Finally, Matt is making, it looks like a fake public company. So I don't know what that is, but he'll, he'll tell us. Uh, anytime we can add a war to our list of wars... <laughs> <laughs> I think I think we've accomplished what we set out to accomplish with Free Float Media. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's it. let's get in it. Yeah, I don't know if I've I don't know if I've timed these stories right. I've rewritten every section every story multiple times today, so I'm a little bit of a mess. So, we'll just see how it goes, all right? <laughs> Making it a unique experience. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to show off that we do we do research and write we do. There's a lot of writing. There's a lot of scripting. Yeah. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of editing. Yeah, this isn't your your typical like guy in a garage like talking about how his socket wrench works podcast. Here's I know the that's thing. the. Yeah. It may sound like we don't know what we're talking about, but we actually <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah, check our resumes if if we were to give you them. <laughs> All right, let's um, let's go around the globe. We're going around the globe today, right? Let's start. We'll start with the obvious target. This is the big story uh, this morning. Uh, and, and a great distraction from uh, impeachment, uh, Trump has started his uh, trade tariff tirades again. So he's back on his WWF, WWE, Worldwide Wrestling Trade Tariff Fund again. Yesterday, he proposed imposing duties on French goods over a tech tax and then adding tariffs on steel. From Brazil and Argentina, supposedly, Matt, these uh, these these tariff threats stunned Wall Street, as as, as uh, Wall Street lost uh, a lot of points in the Dow Jones and S P five hundred, which we discussed yesterday. So, Matt, how how was Wall Street still stunned by an erratic ruler? I don't understand this part of it. So, I'm going to say this because there was a study done by J P Morgan uh, uh, maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago. That suggested Trump's tweets do actually move markets. Yeah. So believe that. That what that means is not that Trump has the power to move markets, but Wall Street keeps being stunned every time Trump says a thing <laughs> and then the market moves. Yeah. I, I 
I, I, I mean, like, isn't this is this is if you're going to credit Trump for anything, this is the great power he has to change a conversation just with like 240 characters. He's amazing. Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. I mean, to me, it speaks to the to the lack of depth of many Wall Street analysts. I mean, are they not are they do not have a, a liberal arts education? Don't they, don't they know that? <laughs> That we know the answer to that is no. Politically speaking, this would be the perfect time to create bizarre distractions, wouldn't it? It is. It is. Uh, but there's a real so cost just, added to these yeah. distractions. Like, look, volatility is bad when you need to buy something that's not going to come mm-hmm. for like three months. Like anytime, like if you're a company and you got to buy, you got to spend some capital to buy some shit and it's got to trans, it's got to be transported from one side of the globe to the other, or you need to build something. It takes six months to build, or you need to, you want to build a plant somewhere and it's going to take you five years to do it. You got to make a decision now about five years from now. Mm-hmm. All of this right. stuff is like, what the hell do I do? Like that, you don't know whether or not you're going to be secure, except to yeah. you either choose to ignore it or you choose to freak out about it. Wall Street continually re- decides, oh, let's freak out this time again because it's new. But companies yeah, have to you, make real decisions. That's why people react so badly. You'd think they would have been sedated yesterday as, as $9.4 billion was being spent on Cyber Monday, but I guess they— they would they would shop and then they'd wake up and feel stunned and then they'd shop and then they'd feel stunned again. Maybe and, they just all had buyer's remorse at the same time. Uh, it's worth noting that that Trump's targets this time are are actually not just China. He's targeting France, Argentina, and Brazil. So it's uh, good. Yeah, let's hit everyone the, we've ever met. Passing the love around. All right, let's. Um, I wanted to focus these last stories here in this section on uh, things happening in Asia, right? Okay. Asian okay notes. Yeah, because we rumor has it we're, we are developing an Asian listener base. God love you. That is that is a singular. <laughs> Thank you for listening. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on some important uh, Asian business news that affects us here and across the world. So let's go. First, um, Alibaba has raised another 1.7 billion dollars after raising. $13 billion a few weeks ago in the world's largest cross-border secondary share sale. Wow. <laughs> Anything to say about that? Uh, any? I think we, I, I just want to say this. I think we should be talking more about Alibaba. We we should include it in our big data section. We, Why isn't it, Alibaba part of Fang? Shouldn't it be Fang? Yeah, no. yeah, it already has an A. So, yeah, I think it's just it's U.S. centric trick nonsense that we don't talk about it more so this is i'm just announcing we're going to be watching you more closely alibaba uh next chinese scientists are trying to find a way to use dna samples to create images of a people of people's faces uh this technology which is also being developed in the u.s and elsewhere is causing concern that china is building a tool that could be used to justify and intensify racial profiling against the uyghurs but it, it, it's it's important to point out that a lab associated with the research uh, relied on software made from Thermo Fisher Scientific. Um, of course, once this came out, Thermo Fisher Thermo Fisher announced that it would no longer sell these uh, the software to China. But yeah, what's the bigger takeaway here, Matt? Is there well, one? every time I hear Thermo Fisher now, I think of my Sweet Sixteen boards of. Highly male, oh, highly right. white boards. Yeah. They were among okay. the Sweet Sixteen. But right. let's topic at hand. Um, I mean, this is like, I mean, how, we've crossed the pale into a publicly traded version. Oh, China's not publicly traded, but like technology developed by companies that you own in your portfolio being used to make Minority Report a real thing, right? Mm. Like, and. Do 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 I guess the question is do we care because it's freaky and we can't stop it but it, do does anyone invested in these companies care does anyone care what the technology no. gets used for No I think this is like a what, what this is is just pointing out our xenophobia and racism I guess because th- th- it's not like Facebook and Google and Amazon are doing anything really different and they, and believe me whoever comes up with it first the, the other companies will follow suit I mean this 
this just isn't new. It just it sounds right. It's just to to the, your average American, it seems creepy because it's part of the Cold War. I mean, isn't that about it? Uh, it does. You know what it is? It's like the digital version of when they find like prehistoric fossils of early humans and they reconstruct their faces. It does seem like the modern digital equivalent of that. And um, I, I'm just waiting for the day when, you know, they reconstruct a face and it's like, you know, it's totally wrong and they throw them in jail and then we can be <laughs> yeah, outraged. Well, yeah. Oh, that was nice. All right. <laughs> I have a, I have a few more stories about Huawei and TikTok. What do you say? Yeah, let's hit them. Let's hit them fast. Hit them? Yeah. All right. So two things about Huawei. One, it's planning to ship its research center to Canada from the U.S., which is not a big surprise. Um, two, there's an interesting story. So Huawei enjoyed this big wave of patriotic support after it was put on a trading blacklist by the U.S., but now it's facing public backlash in China after news came out that an employee who asked for a severance payout after being laid off after 13 years of the job was detained by police on an extortion charge for 251 days. Wow. So he's since been... He's since been released. Um, the Chinese government gave him about fourteen thousand dollars, but but I guess this is a pretty big deal over there because this is something that's the the backlash is trending um, on the on the Chinese Twitter company called Weibo. Yeah, Weibo. Yeah, because they don't have Twitter, so they use Weibo. This is the big trending hashtag. Weibo. It's a lot, and I don't really get this one because this is. They must have a different type of hashtag system because this is a damn long hashtag, but here it is. Former Huawei employee who was detained hopes Huawei will apologize. That's one hashtag. <laughs> yeah. So that's probably just like one. I don't know. It's probably okay. one. Okay. So. Interesting point on this story that's a parallel with stories that the story we were talking about last week in Google and, um, and recently across tech, the tension between technology and employee between company and employee is i i actually like macro view we're swinging back like there's a lot of consolidated corporate power right now even in china mm -hmm. and i think that i think that the more the employees feel the pinch like you don't give a dude severance and he says can i please have some severance and you detain them or you fire yeah. four employees who are talking about, you know, organizing the, because they're talking about organizing. You find some pretense to fire them. You are poking the sleeping bear of yeah. lots and lots and lots of employees. And you're trying to maintain control. And there's an obvious parallel or metaphor here uh, regarding the protesters in Hong Kong, right? I mean, I mean, there's. I, I think China is just trying to figure out how to keep people shut up for as long as they can, right? Just reconstruct their faces. That's the, how you do it. Into what? Into one giant, <laughs> using their like, DNA, slobbering criminal. <laughs> uh, finally, I should just add because I just wanted to say this sentence out loud. There's a lawsuit, a uh, class action lawsuit against TikTok, alleging that TikTok has surreptitiously vacuumed up and transferred to servers in China vast quantities of private and personally identifiable user data. I just like that sentence. It is a beautiful sentence. Let's... Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's our Asian news roundup. And hit us with some uh, feedback. If you, are, if you are people who are listening in other countries, um, yeah, let us know type of stories that you want us to cover because we will there's a lot to cover it's, it's, we it's a, it's a, shamelessly yeah. adore our fans <laughs> we do <laughs> uh all right here's a new section i don't really know what the section. you're gonna have to explain this section it's called what because you named it what the board what the board what is this i just wanted to make yeah. board a, a, like some sort of some sort of swear the boards of directors Bo okay. we're talking about boards yeah. of directors here yeah, I mean, it's something we need to probably focus on more because we do talk a lot about CEOs because they're easy targets because they are they often act erratically and idiotically with their sackfuls of cash. But, but you know, it, it needs to be talked about more and that the, the, there are boards behind these CEOs That's it. allowing this behavior, right? There's a chain I mean, of command here. When you 
the one thing you get as an investor for the most part, other than the share that you can trade later, assuming it's liquid, is the ability to pick board members with a vote. That's usually the one thing you get. Yeah, and the ones who are who are marked as independent are, are supposed to have an independent voice. They're not supposed to be lackeys of the CEO. I mean, that's Correct. that's really that's the design of the system. Which gets us into right. this story. Yeah, let's talk about it. So this is this is the, the context behind this new section. What the board, uh, the CEO of Twitter and Square, uh, Jack Dorsey, who we don't we don't really talk a lot about Jack Dorsey. My guess is because he's managed, at least in the vein of a of a Zuckbergian halo, managed to do a lot of stuff right. Yeah, Uh, he just seems to be the wrong word. Well, I don't know. I was even looking uh, at the ownership at Twitter, and Jack Dorsey, believe it or not, only owns about two percent of the shares, and there are no dual class voting shares, so he actually has 2% of the voting power. So it really is running as a public company should be running, yeah. right? Well, hypothetically. Which is pretty remarkable. Yeah, but okay. But still, it's in this day and age, we complain about it a lot. From the big tech Silicon Valley perspective, it is goddamn remarkable that he's not that power hungry, it seems. Anyway, so uh, Jack Dorsey has announced plans to move to Africa for up to six months next year. Uh, analysts have doubts about who will run the companies in his absence, while some Square analysts are, are bullish on the payments opportunity. They want to know who will mine the store while Disney is abroad. So a corporate governance expert uh, in our field uh, from Yale, Jeff Sonnenfeld, this is what he had to say. A six-month leave would be reckless on the CEO's part, and allowing it would be irresponsible and negligent on the part of the board. So I don't know about this one, Matt. I, cause so first shout of all, out to I mean, Jeff. I, yeah, um, but can I just say something before you get into it? it if he was, and, and, and maybe this is like my my, my ninth grade. You went to ninth of, grade. Yeah, maybe this is the ninth grader in me, like reacting to this. But if he was going to London, would people be so damn freaked out? Like, what's the? Well, I yeah. So I I'm do I do think that that. So I I am with you where I have like a mixed feeling about it. Like. They have internet in Africa. There are CEOs in Africa. It's like you can maintain and operate a company from Africa now. Like it's that. But yeah, the heart of the heart, hearts of darkness was written at least more than two years ago. <laughs> but you do have to like part no, of the. I think the question, underlying question, is what is the role and responsibility of the CEO? vis-a-vis yeah. where they are with you know next to their their employees or are they allowed to just be remote employees like it's one thing when your your you know your junior accountant moves to Africa and lo- logs in by VPN sure sure it's another thing yeah. when it's like the head of the company and what is the role to Sonnenfeld's point of the board which is why we're talking about this right now what is the board supposed to do when the CEO spontaneously says PS going to Africa for six months. I'll be back later, dudes. Like what is the board supposed to do? I, I looked at all these announcements. I mean, I don't think there's a formal announcement, but he didn't actually say he wouldn't be working. Is is that implied? This is part of the confusion. Like I, I, like I had to read the announcement three times because I thought he meant he was moving Twitter to Africa. And I was like, cool. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Africa, you know, Africa incorporated Twitter might be kind of cool. But it does just seem like I can't tell if it's sabbatical. It doesn't seem to be like the the official statement from Twitter was no more. We we have no further comment other than Jack's tweet, which was how it was announced in Uh a tweet, like moving to Africa for six months. As an aside, he is the one individual who I will allow to make announcements on Twitter. <laughs> he he is a billionaire. He could literally have bought a house in Africa anywhere, moved like actually gone there, not told anyone, and just work there for six months, and no one yeah, would have true. cared, right? Yeah. yeah. But making an announcement makes it seem like is this an official thing where the CEO is absent for six months out of out of 2020, especially given the fact that Twitter's having like operational problems. And as an investor, do you say, oh, well, I, 
I don't like this. Vote that dude out. What the board? Yeah, when and which I, I've just said, told you that they have the power to vote him out. They right? have the power, and we're going to talk about the I mean, power this, soon. This is not a Zaki situation. It's not full of um, Zuck. Anyway, well, this will probably here, unfold. Yeah, and here's why I love this story because we don't we don't talk enough about non South Africa Africa. I mean, so I, I like I love this part of the story, right? It's simultaneously uh, uh, negligent uh, and inspiring. <laughs> the other the, the other thing I just wanted to say briefly is is No, I don't know. I don't know. I lost it. <laughs> that was There's also so negligent and inspiring. Yeah. It was cuz you know why? Because I know the segment's over, but there's just so much I could talk about this one for an hour, really. <laughs> I just think it's it, I just think it's wild. I I really I do. It's just, it's great. It's great. Let's get into business. Uh, right. Yeah, let's get out of here. Get my get my sanity back. I, need I a little prefer bit you cut. unhinged. Yeah, well, I you know this is part of the thing is that you know we're still developing new shows for for free float media. This is our first show, our first podcast, um, and you know we're trying to develop new content, and those shows will release you know if not by the end of the year, early next year. But, you know, we work with this sort of false confined space where we try to limit, you know, these stories to a few minutes. We try to limit the show to 30 minutes. But, you know, there's a lot more to say sometimes. That's that's what I'm trying to get at. Unhinge even further, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk about Biz Nuggets. Let's stay in Asia for the first one. South Korean self-service beer bars have become the new rage in Seoul. The customers are handed wristbands with embedded chips that automatically record the brand and amount that they dispense from taps that line the walls. Soon, internal Amazon user profiles will say things like, this drunk bastard likes to buy vintage jeans after his spent IPA. <laughs> I just like the idea right? I mean, that that's... they went to like a self-serve yogurt shop and they were like, this could work for beer. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> that's a but that's all this really is. Is it, it's not even about the self service. It's about that that they 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 are forced to wear these these digital wristbands that that capture their consumption. It's pure disruption, baby. Pretty soon, everything's a wristband. All right. Next, let's we got a couple of YouTube stories here. Um, uh, these are these are juicy ones. First, in an interview with uh, 60 Minutes. So this is not a place to hide. You don't go to 60 Minutes to hide. YouTube CEO Susan, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this. Do you know how to pronounce her last name? Wojcicki? Wojcicki? You got, got, you got any insight there? No, I don't. Uh, this is not investor insight. She, I don't have it. She she said that she lets her children only watch videos on YouTube Kids, not on the regular YouTube, right? And that she limits how much time her children spend on YouTube Kids. So already I'm like, I'm smelling uh, hypocrisy, like a whiff of <laughs> hypocrisy. Uh, you know, because wouldn't it be nice to have your staff help you uh, limit your kids' screen time behavior? But next, um, I want to talk a little bit about YouTube Kids. So while it was launched as a way for kids to safely browse videos, YouTube Kids has also, according to the New York Times, has hosted a slew of problematic content, including violent and disturbing videos. Early this year, YouTube disabled comments on tens of millions of videos featuring minors after it was discovered that pedophiles used the platform to direct others to videos of young children. And in September, YouTubers fined $170 million for violating the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act after it was alleged that YouTube earned millions by illegally collecting personal data from young children without proper consent. So, so, uh, Maybe that's why she limits her the, kids' time on YouTube. Yeah, I know. This, I mean, this is crazy, right? I mean, this. think about this. I mean, it, it's such a crazy web of danger for children. But but I, I'm sorry, but Susan, it, it's just completely naive to think that it's that easy to keep kids from finding corners of the internet. Was, right? I, I mean, what the, what's the end game here for YouTube? Like, isn't... Like, do, when does YouTube become a liability for Google, for Alphabet, versus 
cash generating. They make 16 billion a year in ad revenue at YouTube and and um that's an estimate. But Google makes like 116 billion a year. So you're not talking about an insignificant amount, but in the end, Google makes so much more money from other stuff that does not require it to be a content curator, provider, maintainer. And and now, and there's the story today in the New York Times about the personal injury lawyer who's suing Facebook about right exactly. I was, yeah, I mean, like, so there's she's suing Facebook, basically saying Facebook as a platform was used as part of prostitution rings, like pimps were using right. Facebook, right? Um, yeah, and the, they're using it. There, there's like they're trying to get past you uh, a, a, a section two thirty in the U.S. law which allows these providers to not be responsible for what's on their platforms. If that gets whittled away, isn't YouTube just a liability? Do you spin it off at some point? Do you, do you front well, run it? Yeah. So this is the thing. This is like, this is the important takeaway from this, from the moment we're living in is that these companies are either going to have to make some kind of, some bargain, some, you know, some negotiating bargains, like where we give up these unusual rights, right. To, to circumnavigate certain sections of the law, or they're going to have to think ahead and maybe get potential future liabilities like YouTube, like WhatsApp, like Instagram, right? I mean, they're going to have to deal with antitrust before it just lands in their lap, right? They're going to have to start to, to chip away at this. Can I also say for the record, I think it's clear humanity writ large was not designed to develop its own content. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it, can Are we, we proof of that? Can we, can we just agree that while the platforms are ridiculous for not policing it, people yeah. are terrible. Like people just say and do terrible things. Yeah. And when you allow them to organize, they do terrible things all right. over. You're right. I think the, the problem is the first thing you said, and this is what, you know, investors should be thinking about is that the platforms are not responsible yet for like they, they're not being forced to police it. I mean, that's right. Yeah. And when they are, it's going to be a shit show. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So speaking of YouTube, tens of thousands of surgery related videos are on YouTube. I didn't even know that some say that medical students and residents rely on YouTube to fill in gaps in their training. And for that reason, some medical experts are calling for better vetting and curation of the content. This is news to me, Matt. Yeah, it's also It doesn't surprise stupid. me, but it's news to me. Okay, so yeah, I, I have to say that I'm totally biased because my wife is a surgeon. My wife has gone okay. on YouTube and used YouTube to look at techniques. If yeah. you are watching this show, are you, or you're listening to us on a podcast, does that mean you are learning how to do finance or are you simply informing yourself what's going on? Yeah. Like it's right. ridiculous, but it, it does like athletes don't watch game tape to learn how to shoot a basketball. They watch game tape to refine the techniques that they've spent decades learning sure. already. Sure. The, the story itself was stupid, but, but the problem, like the investor problem is the same one as the kids you know, like, you know, child pornography, it's all those problems are, are interlinked. They're on a platform that cannot police its content, period. Whether or not it's true or false, whether it's useful or not, there's no method to police this stuff and how it gets used and who's using it. Yeah. And yet uh, underfunded public libraries have managed ways to figure out how to uh, manage their content. All right. Uh, I wanted to go, uh, this is a little, this is a little inside the pants here, but I had to point this out. I just wanted to make fun of ISS. ISS is this, this, this giant monolith of a proxy voting advisory, right? Which they basically tell uh, passive investors how to vote. Do I got that right? You do. Not just passive, all, right, so I, all investors. I just, I, I just want to point out this toothless wonder that they just, this is part of their new, uh, voting policy for 2020. This is on board gender diversity, a topic that is near and dear to my heart, at least. Maybe Matt's. Uh, all right. So here's the new toothless wonder of a policy. Ready for it? Yeah. Uh, just listen to the language. I'm not 
I'm not adding any language to to embellish this. It's just this is their wishy-washy, stupid language. Ready? Beginning in 2020, ISS will generally recommend voting against nominating committee chairs and potentially other directors on a case-by-case -case basis at companies with no women on the board unless certain mitigating factors apply. The hell that's come on that's that is terrible that sucks you suck I no forget it that is come perfect on. policy <laughs> <Come on. laughs> that's really you, you're too afraid to just say if there's no if there are absolutely no women on the board that stinks you stink <laughs> and we're not going to vote for you and what is the mitigating factor here is that like what is it? They had a, their first grade teacher was a woman and, and she was really mean to him and he doesn't, he can't, right? I don't, what is it? Well, maybe it's that the entire board is comprised of executives from the company. <laughs> and the mitigating factor is you don't have a vote anyway. Oh, so like a, Zuck, a Zuckbergian world where yeah, maybe no one has any real that's say. Mitigating. Yeah. Okay, sure. All right. Uh, next. Uh, Boeing is inviting industry members and analysts to visit with executives at uh, 737 MAX facilities to drum up support for the planes. Boeing has repeatedly says, say, is repeatedly saying it expects to gain regulatory appro approval for the planes before the end of the year. Of course, the FAA says, no, we don't have a timeline on this. So I'm just pouring this out to say, yes, CEO Dennis Mullenberg still has a job at Boeing. <laughs> uh, next... Uh, Peloton, you know, Peloton, this bike, stationary bike company? I do. Okay, so they had this holiday ad that supposedly is making many uh, onlookers, many viewers cringe. They had a holiday ad portraying a woman whose husband gives her a stationary bike for Christmas. Peloton's advertising has been the subject or jokes or, of, or criticism for seeming to cater to the very wealthy. People also complained that she was too thin to need the bike in the first place. Oh, look, I... I love making fun of companies, but are are we like peak complaining about crap here, Matt? Like, <laughs> I think that I mean, gonna, like, look, if you're going to complain about Peloton, complain about yeah. the fact that its business model requires incredibly wealthy people to continue spending incredible sums of money on a basically what is a bike. It's a bike. Yeah, but I mean, I look, I don't, I don't, I don't like BMWs. I don't want a BMW, and you know, I can't afford a BMW, but. It doesn't mean that I think that there shouldn't be a market for stupid BMWs, but, but this, I don't get this. But but when you're IPOing in a multi-billion dollar, you know, like IPO, basically the company says it's worth billions of dollars. Do, we do know this is like, we remember the total body gym from like 1997, right? We remember yeah. that thing. Or or what was it? Bowflex? Remember Bowflex? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is, isn't this just modern Bowflex? How, that wasn't a multi-billion dollar company. This is more like this to me. If you're going to cringe and be uncomfortable with like the right. stupidity of a commercial, do it because you're looking at it and you're like, how is this company worth so much to investors? Like what? Yeah, that's the, the that's hell is going work. on. Yeah. And, and by the way, people, you can be skinny fat like me. All right. Some of <laughs> some of some people like me like these. I need to get on that bike. All right. All right, but don't issues. shame don't shame her for for appearing too thin to get a damn bike. <laughs> oh, sorry. All right. Uh, potential jurors in the defamation trial of uh, Elon Musk. Ready for this? They may be excused from the case if they voice strong feelings about billionaires or people who visit Thailand. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to say that. It's an interesting twist. It's an interesting, interesting twist on the OK billionaire thing, right? Because this is, it's, it's like, not like if you excluded everyone who didn't like billionaires from juries, <laughs> what would you yeah. be left with? You'd be left with people who are OK with people who visit Do you Thailand. Think Howard I, Schultz and Michael Bloomberg and uh, Jeff Bezos are all available on a daily basis to just sit on juries because <laughs> they're the only ones. Who... <laughs> Finally, in our brand new war. Uh, in our chicken, crispy chicken sandwich war, McDonald's is testing a crispy chicken sandwich. Uh, right, wake me up when it's a plant-based ch chicken sandwich. All right, we're, we're definitely running long. Despite our, we had a, 
We had a very long internal meeting here yesterday about we're going to keep every show under 30 minutes, but we <laughs> did a good job of that yesterday. I'm going to do a quick Matt makes here. Let's we do already it. screwed up today. If you're listening, and I, I see people are, are providing some feedback and some comments um, online, let us know. Do you like the shows longer, shorter? Do you care? Did somebody tell us All something right. about something. Yeah. Come on. Talk to us. All right. Go ahead, Matt. Matt makes a fake public company. Mm, beautiful. Okay, so we talk a lot about um, companies and trading yeah. them and stocks, but I want to define a term here that we've used before. If you haven't listened, you wouldn't have heard this necessarily, but we, I, I talk routinely about fake public companies. These yeah. are companies- Like fake book. Like, fa like Facebook, fake book. So I'm going to define it right here. A fake public company is a company that sells shares to the public. Like you can go out and buy its shares with your Schwab account, but you have no voting power or real legal rights because somebody else controls it. Usually it's ruled by a version of a sort of corporate monarch, a family monarchy, a founder firm. These are companies. The reason why this matters if you're an investor is because when something goes wrong, you can't vote for new board members or get the CEO ousted. Only the controlling shareholder can do that. Only whoever the corporate monarch is can do that. Okay. Now, the reason why we talk about this a lot here is because Zuckerberg on Facebook is the ultimate current corporate monarch. He's a 34-year-old yep. dude in exactly. charge of one of the largest companies in the entire world with absolutely no accountability to anyone except himself. The board is doesn't even have a college him. degree. Yeah, he's, yeah. I mean, he's, yeah, he's basically a moron. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Not to say that. <laughs> yeah. And now, this is cool to, to buy this company when you're into like the growth and how amazing it is until Cambridge Analytica happens or some big scandal. And then you realize we actually can't do anything about this right. anymore. Right. No Ever. Ever. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to do is very quickly just show you how big of a problem this is if you are a U.S. based investor in U.S. 8.5%, nearly 9% of U.S. publicly traded companies have a shareholder who owns more than 50% of the voting power or capital. Okay. That's eight, almost 9% of U.S. public companies are fake public companies. Okay? Right. And, I, and I, just to add something to this, I will say that other markets, other countries uh, actually consider 30% to be to be a controlling stake. Yeah, so I that, went so conservative here. I went with 50%. Right. Being, right. And, okay, keep going. Because I wanted to emphasize the fact that you have basically zero rights, not like... Zero rights. Um... 80% of those companies, 80% of the, you know, 9% of fake public companies, uh, almost all of them are family or founder firms. There's very okay. few that are not, okay? Yeah, it's a way to maintain control over generation, like beyond one generation, usually. So where this matters, where this is a big deal, are is effectively in two industries right now, but it affects a lot oh. of industries. Media and entertainment, is by far okay. the worst. And we're talking about, if you watch Succession, the whole yeah. thing about like the Murdoch family is this. Yeah. You cannot yeah. do anything about Fox or the, or the Murdoch empire because they own it. You can buy some shares, yeah. hope they go up, but they own it and you do nothing about it, okay? Yeah. The other mm -hmm. place this matters is in food and staples retailing. Okay. Now, Not to derail you, but do you have any idea why those two industries? It's unclear, except that this is where founders retain, or families. It's mostly families that actually retain a lot yeah, of control. Yeah, right, right. It's, we okay. talk a lot about in, this in tech, but it's families that retain the most control. Yeah. Now, um, the first chart I sort of generated on this was to show U.S. market cap and uh, of companies that are fake public companies. Three companies are, are the ones that matter. They, it's Alphabet, which is Google, Facebook, and Walmart. So okay. these are the 
these are massive companies that you basically have no control because the family does or the founder does. So it's more interesting, mm -hmm. I think. I just wanted to list a couple of companies that aren't those massive ones that you may not think of when you think of like little corporate kings, little corporate royalty. Yeah. Fake companies. Yeah. Fake companies. Okay. T Mobile. Fake company. Sorry. Yeah. T Mobile. T Mobile, uh, 70 ish billion dollar market cap. Controlled, totally controlled, fake public. Thank you, right, T-Mobile. Controlled by Deutsche, Deutsche Telekom. Is you right? are fake public. Yeah, you're. You're. It's owned by another company. Yep. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Estee Lauder. You really yeah. like if you are using eyeliner right now, and it's from Estee Lauder. You bought it from a fake public company. Hmm. Congratulations. Not that you necessarily care. And then maybe maybe for some smaller fare, you're maybe you're streaming us live on your television yeah. through, through your Roku device. Okay. Fake public. Fake public. These are fake public companies, and I just wanted the the whole point of this was to begin the discussion of what is a is a public company, what is not a public company, because these are fakes. Yeah, let's. I like this because this is this is the one thing we can do here is that we can just harp on shit, right? Over and over and over. <laughs> no, really, because I, I I think this is what's lost in our industry is that we're we're too timid to harp on shit because we're I don't know we're afraid of what I don't know what we're afraid, of. but we can do that here, and I think it's worth pointing out really that companies like this are not really public companies. They're not, and if you're invested in them. In fact, I, I did one quick survey and noticed that yeah. Franklin Templeton funds, like if you invest in a mutual fund that Franklin Templeton sold you, 7% of Franklin Templeton's investments are actually in fake public companies. This is like a real problem in your real portfolio and things yeah. that you really own. You don't like these companies. The only thing you can do is sell them. You can't change them. So or, or congratulations. Or rich enough to buy them. <laughs> right, let's get out of here. We're way late. I got I got a lot of snow to shovel. This is Business Pants. Subscribe, rate us, let us know how you feel about everything you heard, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, see ya.